So in the last episode, we created an authentication status that allowed us to know if a user was unknown, we were still trying to figure out if they're logged in, or they're logged in with a token and a user, or they're logged out. In the process of doing so, we broke our UI and broke our button and our styling. So let's go about fixing that now. So I'm in view.elm, and here's our auth button that we're rendering. But what we actually need to do is start rendering that in from in here. So if the auth status is unknown, we're going to do text empty string. If they're logged out, we're going to call authentication uh, but oh, sorry auth button. I'm going to say sign in. And if they're logged in, we'll say auth button sign out. And now we can have sign out here. That's looking much nicer. And if we do the hack to make ourselves sign out, so we'll do that and we'll come to the index page. You see it now says sign in. Let's now look at making these actually work. Sign in actually is going to work as is. We did that in a previous episode. So sign in takes the user to our server, which does the authentication and redirects them back. But sign out currently, if we look at the inspector, is doing the same thing. It's linking to localhost slash auth. So that's no good. In this case, what we need to do is actually just deal with the sign out action internally, reset the authentication state in our model to logged out, and that's all we need to do. And then maybe redirect the users to the home page. So what we need to do on our auth button is we need to change the href if the user is trying to log out. So rather than it be to slash auth, it's going to instead be just to slash. So what we could do is make auth button take two of these commands. But what I'm actually going to do is make multiple functions that give us different types of button and just pull out the common stuff. And the common stuff here is going to be this big list of classes. So I'm going to say auth button styles uh, isn't going to take anything and it's going to return attribute of type uh, message. Auth button styles. And it's just going to be uh, this class thing here. So let's select all this. Uh, just that bit, delete that, pull it into here. And I have dramatically failed to uh, copy that correctly. So let's say try that again, styles equals, and then find that equals and get rid of it. So auth button now, the anchor can just return the auth button styles like so. So that's all working now. So let's say we're going to build the sign in button and it's just going to return HTML type message. And we'll take this here Put it in here, uh, sign in button equals. So it's going to take the styles, the href will be slash auth, and the text will be sign in. And let's repurpose this auth button to be the sign out button. So we'll say sign out button. Uh, we don't need a string, it's all going to be hard coded. So we can delete that. And each its href is just going to be slash. Uh, so we assume when you're signing out, we're just going to take you to the home page. So its href will be slash. I don't have a text, uh, um, we need to replace button text with sign out. So now we can update logged out to just return the, uh, if you're logged out, we need the sign in button. And if you're logged in, we need the sign out button. And in fact, rather than this be slash, we're gonna make this a bit more explicit and we're gonna say slash sign out. Let's go see what happens now when we click on the sign out button. So you can see if I click on the sign out button, we get a URL request logged. It's an internal URL where the path is slash sign out. So what we can do is actually listen for a user going to slash sign out and then sign them out and redirect them. This is better than having an event listener specifically listening to clicks on this and logging the user out because it means particularly power users might be able to actually go to slash sign out if they realize that that works and do it there. So this is rather than listening to a button and dealing with state, we're much better off actually caring about URLs and, and dealing with it from there. So let's go into our main and we've got on URL request. Let's find definition. It's here. So if it's internal URL, for now we're just going to say case URL.pathName, I believe, is the bit we want. Uh, it's not path name, sorry, it's just path. Case URL.path of, and if it's slash sign out, then we're going to sign the user out. And so on URL request returns a message, we'll say sign user out. And if it's anything else, for now we're just going to no op. So the next thing to do is go to the message and we'll create a message called sign user out. And now let's deal with that message in our update. And go in here, sign user out. So what you might be thinking here is that we need to distinguish. We need to actually check if a user is logged in before doing anything. In this case, actually, if they're logged out already and they go to slash sign out, we're just going to log them out again, which in effect is going to do nothing other than redirect them to the home page. So what we'll say is model. And what we're going to do is say uh, the authentication status is now logged out. It doesn't go back to unknown. It goes to logged out. Uh, and then for now, we'll do command.none. We're going to fill in command.none in a minute. 
But now if we go back to the browser, I should be able to click on the sign out link and it should change the text to sign in. So see now if I click on sign out, you can see it swaps back to sign in. The next thing you need to do is redirect the user to the index page. Elm's browser navigation exposes a push URL function, which takes our key, which we store on the model, and the URL, and takes the user to that page. So we can just pass it the string slash to take the user to the index page. So in here, we can change command.run to navigation.pushurl, uh, and we'll give it slash. And what's the error I'm getting here? And the error I'm getting is that push URL needs to take the key. So we can say model dot, uh, did I call it key or did I call it, I think I called it navigation key. And let's actually break this onto multiple lines. So we're updating our user's status to be logged out and we're taking them to the index page. So you can see here I'm on slash sign in. If I click sign out, we get taken to the index page. There's one more thing we want to do though. If I refresh, I'm actually now signed in because we don't clear the local storage token, which we should. If you're clicking sign out, we should clear any stored tokens we have. Let's quickly go and implement that. If you remember, we already have a port called send token to storage. I'm going to create another one that's going to be called clear token from storage. It's not going to take a string, but these ports do need to take something. So I'm going to give it the empty unit type. You can just read this as sending through nothing. And we're doing this because this is the way ports need to be defined. You can't define a port as just being something that returns a command message. You'll see that L will moan at me for that. So in our signed user out, we now need to do command.batch. We're going to take the user to the home page, and we're going to clear token from storage. Just hoping auto complete would help me there. Uh, and I've forgotten to close the brace there. And you can see it's moaning clear token for storage needs an argument, which is just the empty unit type. So I'm going to pass it there. If this is confusing you, just think that we, we basically just need to pass the port something, and it doesn't matter what. But Elm requires that when we send data through to ports, we do send something. I could just send an arbitrary string here. That's fine, because in the JavaScript that consumes this, we're not going to use it. But rather than send through an arbitrary string, the unit type is a good stand-in for, I don't care what the data is here. I just need to send something to satisfy Elm. So in the JavaScript now, we're subscribing to send token to storage. We're also going to subscribe to clear token from storage. It's not going to take any arguments that we care about. And in here, we can do local storage clear, and it'll be uh, distinctly average, which I should probably pull out into a variable. So let's just do that. So we'll say const storage key equals distinctly average. And then we'll go down here and we'll select all of these and we'll change them for storage key. Let's go and see now if when we're logged out, we get cleared from local storage too. So I'll load up the application so you can see here our key over there and let's hit sign out. And you can see the key is gone and we're back to sign in. And I can hit sign in and be taken to the server to the authentication flow and redirected and the key is put back in place. So we now have authentication working properly, signing in and out is good to go. And we can start looking at actually fleshing out the blogging part of our blogging platform.